Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x squared minus 2 is equal to negative 1. Now really, we're dealing with the limit of a function. And our function could have the domain of all real numbers excluding plus or minus square root of 2. And our function is defined by f of x equals 1 over x squared minus 2. And really, we want to prove that the limit of our function as x approaches 1 is equal to negative 1. And by the epsilon delta definition of a limit, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x in the domain of our function, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 1, is less than delta, then the absolute value of 1 over x squared minus 2 minus negative 1 is less than epsilon. So really, to prove this limit, all we have to do is prove this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. And the whole goal from here is to find a delta greater than 0 that makes this statement turn out true. Now let's pretend as though we've already figured out what to choose delta to be. And from here, we would like to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about all x in the domain of our function, let's give ourselves an arbitrary x in the domain of our function. From here, we want to show if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. From here, we want to show that this inequality is true. So let me start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. And really, we want to make this guy less than epsilon. And in the process of making this guy less than epsilon, we're going to figure out what we should define delta to be. So to start out, let's just re-express this guy in a different way. First of all, combining the two negatives together, we really get plus one. And now let's combine these two guys into a single fraction. We know we can rewrite one as x squared minus two over x squared minus two. And then now that we have common denominators, we can add the two numerators. We're gonna get x squared minus one over x squared minus two. And now if we factor the numerator, we're going to get x minus 1 times x plus 1. And we could also factor the denominator as well. Really, the denominator is just x minus square root of 2 times x plus square root of 2. Right? And now a property of absolute values tells us when we have the absolute value of a fraction, it's really equal to the absolute value of the numerator over the absolute value of the denominator. And then... Another property of absolute values tells us the absolute value of a product is equal to the product of absolute values. So just like that. Okay, so we've re-expressed this guy in a different way. So then what do we do from here? Well, notice we have absolute value of x minus 1. And we know that absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta. Now since all these guys are greater than or equal to 0, Certainly, this guy must be less than or equal to this guy. And you can show that this is true just by manipulating this inequality. If you take the inequality absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta and multiply absolute value of x plus 1 on both sides, well, since absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, you would obtain absolute value of x minus 1 times absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to delta times absolute value of x plus 1. Then, just divide what we have in the denominator on both sides, you would obtain this inequality. So now, what do we do from here? Hmm. Now remember, the whole goal is to make this guy less than epsilon. And in the process of doing so, we're going to figure out what we should define delta to be. Well, maybe it's at this point we start thinking about how we should define delta. Now, a trick we can use to define delta is to define delta so that delta 
is the smallest element in a list of positive numbers. In other words, we're going to restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to a list of positive numbers. Okay, but then how should we decide how to restrict delta? Well, what tends to be nice is if we restrict delta small enough so that the guys we have inside these absolute values always have a fixed sign. And what I mean by that is, if we restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to 1 fourth, well then, absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, which is less than or equal to 1 fourth. So that implies absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 fourth. And in the language of absolute values, this means that x minus 1 lies between negative 1 fourth and positive 1 fourth. And then adding one to all three sides, we get that x lies between three fourths and five fourths. So if we restrict delta to be less than or equal to one fourth, this implies x lies between three fourths and five fourths. But no matter what value x is between three fourths and five fourths, x plus one is always positive. x minus square two is always negative. x plus square two is always positive. So the guys inside these absolute values all have a fixed sign. Since x plus 1 is positive, its absolute value is equal to x plus 1. Since x minus square root of 2 is negative, its absolute value is equal to square root of 2 minus x. And since x plus square root of 2 is positive, its absolute value is equal to x plus square root of 2. So this will be true if we restrict delta to be less than or equal to 1 fourth. Okay, but then why is this nice? Well, notice this is the same thing as this. Now, what we can do is we can manipulate this inequality to show that x plus 1 is less than a fixed positive quantity, 1 over square root of 2 minus x is less than a fixed positive quantity, and 1 over x plus square root of 2 is less than a fixed positive quantity. Let's say, as a hypothetical scenario, we ended up showing x plus 1 is less than the fixed positive quantity 4. 1 over square root of 2 minus x is less than the fixed positive quantity 6. And 1 over x plus square root of 2 is less than the fixed positive quantity 50. If we ended up with this, then this entire thing must be less than the product of delta times 4 times 6 times 50. That's just equal to 1,200 times delta. And now all we would have to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 1,200. With that restriction, this guy would be less than or equal to 1,200 times epsilon over 1,200, which is equal to epsilon. And so we have made this guy less than epsilon, which is what we want. And so that's essentially the strategy. We want to show that each of these three guys are less than fixed positive quantities. And so starting with x plus 1, all we got to do is take the inequality x is less than 5 fourths and add 1 to both sides. You get x plus 1 is less than 9 fourths. And therefore, we have shown x plus 1 is less than a fixed positive quantity. Now, 9 fourths looks pretty ugly. So instead, since 9 fourths is less than 3, we also know that x plus 1 is less than the fixed positive quantity 3. And so I'm just going to say 3 is the fixed positive quantity instead of 9 fourths, just because it looks nicer. So now let's show that 1 over square root of 2 minus x is less than a fixed positive quantity. Well, all we got to do is manipulate this inequality. To start, to bring the minus sign into the picture, let's multiply all three sides by negative 1. And then to bring the square root of 2 into the picture, let's add square root of 2 to all three sides. And then to bring the reciprocal of this into the picture, all we got to do is take the reciprocal of all three sides. Now, since all three of these guys are positive, if we take the reciprocal of all three sides, all that's going to do is flip the signs of the inequalities. 
And so we have shown that this guy is less than the fixed positive quantity one over square root of two minus five fourths. Right, so this is what we currently have, but again, this looks kind of ugly. So I'm actually just gonna get a nicer fixed positive quantity. Now, to get a nicer one, in decimal form, this is essentially this. And we can all agree that this guy is less than this, and this is just equal to 20. So we have shown that one over square root of two minus X is less than the fixed positive quantity 20, which is a lot nicer looking than this. So finally, let's show that one over X plus square root of two is less than a fixed positive quantity. Again, all we gotta do is manipulate this inequality. To start, let's just add square root of two to all three sides of this inequality. And then let's just take the reciprocal of all three sides of the inequality. That's just gonna swap the signs of the inequalities. And so we have shown that one over X plus square root of two is less than a fixed positive quantity, namely one over three fourths plus square root of two. And so this is what we currently have, but this guy looks pretty ugly. So let's try to find a nicer fixed positive quantity. Now in decimal form, this is essentially this, and we can all agree that this is less than this, which is equal to two. So really one over X plus square two is less than the fixed positive quantity two. And so at this point, we have shown that each of these three guys are less than fixed positive quantities. Now, I want to employ these three facts into our proof. So let's just do that real quick. We know we're gonna be restricting delta to be less than or equal to one fourth. So, since delta is less than or equal to one fourth, we know that absolute value of x minus one is less than one fourth. And from here, we were able to deduce that each of these three guys are less than these three guys, respectfully. And now, since x plus one is less than three, one over square root of two minus x is less than 20, and one over x plus square root of two is less than two, well, we know that this entire thing must be less than delta times three times 20 times two. And that's just equal to 120 delta. And now all we gotta do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 120. Because if we do that, then this guy is less than or equal to 120 times epsilon over 120. And that's just equal to epsilon. And so we have made this guy less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted. So if we define delta to be the smaller of one fourth and epsilon over 120, then this argument follows. And we have shown that this statement is true. Therefore, we have proven that the limit of this guy as x approaches one is equal to negative one. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.